Hello everybody and welcome back and it is good to talk to all of you again today and today I'm going to talk to you guys about something a little bit interesting perhaps um, there's also a good chance I might get shit on by a lot of people who are going to think that I am against a certain buff that is coming soon and that buff does happen to do with the Iowa Montana um, you know well not the Alabama but the Alabama has the same issue right now and that is that raised citadel, which you can see quite clearly, for example, on the Iowa, the Missouri, the Alabama, and the Montana, right? And there was a huge thing a while back where you know people brought out all kinds of diagrams or whatever and said, look, look, there's nothing in this space, and it shouldn't be a citadel. Well, unfortunately, I think those people are wrong, uh, namely because I've had time to look at some of the deck-by-deck -deck blueprints, and, well, in those sections, in that particular section, that race section, there's actually some really, really important things. So here is that particular section, highlighted in red. That is a section that's been raised above the waterline. Now, the waterline is where the blue line is in this picture, and the green, that is the main deck. So as you can see, I've pretty much got the spacing correctly, right? Uh, from the main deck down to the waterline, that citadel sits about halfway up. Now, if you look at the sideways image, you might notice that it looks like there's a passageway there and what looks like the upper portions of some boilers. But this picture alone doesn't actually show you the full picture as to what is actually in this area. Because what you really have to look at is this area from a top-down view. And from a top-down view, here's where things kind of show what's going on. You'll see that there's the boiler rooms, right? Now, take a look carefully what's near those boiler rooms. See those things called 5-inch powder magazines? Yeah, this, actu this section of the ship actually has powder magazines for the 5-inch dual-purpose guns. Now, that means if a shell were to get into this area and hit one of these magazines, you're talking about some major serious damage, which in the game would equate to a Citadel hit. Right now, to get a sense of what kind of damage we're kind of looking at when one of these five inch secondary magazines goes off you do kind of just have to look back a little bit in history i mean during pearl harbor this was the five inch magazine of the uss shaw blowing up and i imagine that inside a battleship not exactly a pretty thing so historically that section is actually part of the citadel it is a part that had to be protected and it was essential However, right now in the current world of warships, it doesn't work. Every time you play in Iowa, Missouri, Montana, and in the future, maybe the Alabama, when you turn broadside like this, another battleship is looking at you and they manage to fire shells that land near that waterline, they're going to penetrate that belt armor and they're gonna penetrate it and they're gonna get those citadel hits. So players who've played these battleships with these Ray citadels have really gone and adopted a playstyle, which tends to be like this. They just either go bow in or they go sort of like this, where they offer that side armor essentially to bait out some shots into that area. Um, and what happens is when you do that and you're playing these battleships is you play a very, very static kind of game. You get into position, you stop, you get angled, and you engage enemy targets. And so not a very good playstyle because it's not very dynamic, it ends up being rather static. And Wargaming in the past has tried uh, to potentially eliminate that kind of style, right? So one of the things they did was, for example, uh, they nerfed all bow armor at one point and they tested it you know, to 25 millimeters, the bow armor, and which was basically overmatched by everything. And that was even worse because all of a sudden, uh, ships like the Iowa and the Missouri, well, they had no protection anywhere, no protection in the bow, no protection when they went anywhere else. So that was a really bad idea, and so they never went ahead with it. Still, the two sort of issues continued, right? Um, the issues of gameplay being bow on and static and not fun, that persisted. The issue of, okay, but then when we have the race citadel and we turn our ships and we eat huge broadside just, uh, worth of citadels, that's not fun either. Um, so really issues kind of in both departments. So Wargaming in the last little while has essentially, I guess, relented, right? They've come around and they've said, okay, we are going to lower the citadels on the Iowa, the Montana, and I think the Missouri as well, although I don't hear anything about them doing it uh, for the Alabama right now. 
So, okay, right? Um, situation solved. You know, it's all done. We got the Citadel lowered. These ships are going to be better. Fine. But the thing is, first of all, like I mentioned, it's actually not realistic, right? So Wargaming, which likes to model their ships based on the real blueprints, they're going to run into this problem in the future again, where something else is going to have this issue and people are going to complain about it and they're going to say, okay, yeah, for balance purposes, we're going to raise it or whatnot. You know, all in an effort to try to patch up a problem. But the actual problem is significantly bigger than whether or not the Missouri and the Iowa Citadel, you know, is raised or not. The real, the real problem, unfortunately, is the way that Wargaming has actually built the game mechanics-wise. So one of the first things I guess a lot of people might have noticed when you play the game is that the engagement ranges when you are fighting are massively, massively compressed. In fact, most battleship battles, I would say, happen, at least the good ones, probably happen within about 15 kilometers. Now, they've compressed the range to about maybe 20-something max, and most you know combat, again, happens within that 15-kilometer range. That's not really the range these ships were designed to fight at. You know, they were designed to slug it out at much, much greater distances. So their protection, all the ships' protection, were designed for the engagement scenarios they had in mind, not the artificially capped sort of scenario that we have in-game right now. So what problems does this uh, create? Well, let me go ahead and explain uh, as slowly and as clearly as I possibly can. The very first problem really revolves around penetration, right? So in World of Warships, Wargaming opted for realistic formulas for penetration. So I'm sure you've all seen, you know, penetration curves like this one. And this one, for example, is for the Iowa. And these penetration values that you see, you'll notice goes out to about 20 kilometers. And you'll also notice that the penetration values tend to be very, very high. So in terms of how the guns will perform and everything, Wargaming is opted to go with the realistic route. But again, you have to remember that in real life, these guns engage targets much, much further out. So what we kind of need to do is look a little bit beyond this particular curve and take a look at some of the real engagement numbers, right? And so kind of focus your attention more on the, I guess, the last four rows of this table. And you'll notice that there you're talking about engagement ranges sort of in the 25 kilometers and beyond range, right? And you'll notice that at that distance, for example, side armor penetration drops quite dramatically, right? We're talking somewhere sub 400 millimeters worth of side penetration, although deck penetration does actually go up. So why is this significant? Why all of a sudden am I showing you realistic you know, weapons performance, penetration numbers, and so on and so forth. What does that have to do with the game? Well, let's take a look at this particular red box that I've drawn for you. So we're looking at 30,000 yards in real life, which would have been about 27 and a half kilometers. Now that's approximately 71% of the max range of the Iowa. Now I want you to take a look at that particular box and pay careful attention to the side armor penetration the deck penetration, and the angle of fall. So you'll notice that the side armor penetration is about 380 millimeters, the deck armor penetration is 169 millimeters, and the shell angle of fall is, let's say, roughly 28 degrees. Now, let's take a look at how the Iowa, uh, and remember, in World of Warships, they have done a pretty good job at modeling like armor and everything. Let's see how the Iowa's current protection scheme would help her in, let's say, a real engagement against these kinds of uh, penetration values. So first things first, how does it perform against, let's say, the belt armor? Well, let's take a look at the upper belt armor. First of all, the raw number says 307 millimeters. But you first have to account for the fact that the Iowa's upper belt armor has actually got quite a bit of sloping to it. So its actual effective armor here on this upper piece of belt is actually quite a bit more. Now, I'll show you the exact numbers in a little bit. Alternatively, as well, um, think about the deck penetration, right? Now, if you take a look at the deck, right now, the Citadel deck has 152 millimeters, right? It's completely flat. But don't forget the shell is actually coming in at about 28 degrees. So it's going to be hitting 
that deck armor at quite an angle as well. So at that particular range, the Iowa's armor most likely would have protected her from that particular shell. So first things first, let's take a look at the Citadel roof armor on the Iowa, which is this flat 152 millimeter piece. Now, if the shell was coming in at 28 degrees, wouldn't do anything because at 28 degrees, that piece of thick deck armor would have 324 millimeters of effective protection. So that amount of penetration from the shell that's trying to hit the deck won't do anything at all. So what we really have to do is see whether or not it will penetrate the belt. And that is where things get kind of interesting. All right, so let's take a look at the armor on the Iowa, the main belt armor. 307 millimeters thick in game. But remember I told you about that sloping, right? So let's take a look at the actual armor thickness, right? So first of all, let's just get in there on the armor. There we go. So there is that upper belt armor. And you'll notice that it's 307 millimeters thick. There's a 21 degree slope, which actually makes the effective armor 329 millimeters thick. So if you're going in at basically, let's say you're, you're hitting the, the, the armor flat, right? That's all you're having to deal with, 329 millimeters. Now, in game, remember I told you about that super compressed distance? And remember that super compressed distance with basically realistic penetration means that you always have sky high penetration numbers. And this armor doesn't mean anything. That shell will just go clean through. But what about that realistic scenario, right? What about that realistic scenario? We're talking about you know 380 millimeters of penetration, shell fall angle of 28 degrees. Remember that 28 degree of uh, you know shell fall has to deal with this already sloped 21 degrees worth of armor. So there's additional uh, angling that you have to sort of consider there, right? Not only that, but also to factor in some normalization. So. Taking a bit from, you know, let's say the current World of Warships normalization number, which I believe is six degrees. So let's say that shell hits at 28 degrees and normalizes by six degrees. So, you know, 22 degrees, and then you add it to that 21 degrees. What kind of armor will that shell actually have to penetrate? Well, let's actually take a look. So right now this is flat, right? You can tell the angle of incidence is exactly that slope. So right now, 329 millimeters. All right, so here's what happens if I add 10 degrees to that. Oops. So 10 degrees is, there we go. So at 10 degrees more, there is 358 millimeters of armor. Let's add another 10. There we go. Let's go to, whoop, there is, whoop, right, hold on, there we go. 49 degrees, so that's 20 degrees of shell angle fall along with the already sloped 21 degrees, and you already see something, the armor is 407 millimeters thick effectively, which means that shell hitting at that angle on that piece of angled sloped uh, armor, that shell would just shatter. It wouldn't do any kind of penetration at all, right? So if the situation were realistic, the eye was armor is actually sufficient. Race Citadel or not, its armor can protect it from shell fire. Unfortunately, Wargaming went a little wrong, I think, uh, when it comes to this. They decided to go with realistic penetration values. They decided to go with realistic armor schemes, but then they decided to ignore everything that made those two numbers work together by condensing the range to a point where everything happens essentially at close quarters. And those nations whose ships had armor designs for close quarters are basically the best protected ships in the world, and everybody else can essentially go and get Citadel to death. Hence why we have the problem with those raised Citadels on the Iowa, the Montana, the Alabama, the Missouri, right? Just because the range is completely whacked in comparison to the penetration values. So what is the problem like going to be in the future? Well, the future is going to look a little bit like this. Essentially, any nation that comes out that doesn't have that close range German style protection is going to suck protection wise. And we're going to be in a situation in the future where um, a lot of ships, if they don't have that good side protection, they're going to continue to promote that very sort of static bow on play style. And that's the right thing to do if that's the only option you have. If you cannot ever turn your ship broadside, of course you're going to sit bow on and reverse and try to get out of things and so on and so forth. 
So what am I trying to advocate for here? What I'm trying to advocate for is for Wargaming essentially to take their penetration values and their shell angle of fall and all that, and to essentially scale it to what the range is. So if in normal senses, let's say for the Iowa's guns, let's say 30 kilometers max range, and the value I showed you earlier was at about 27-ish kilometers, right? Something about 70% of the range. Now, if I scale it to the in-game values, well, let's say 20 kilometers is max range, well, 70% puts me roughly around 14 kilometers, somewhere there. Now, that particular Iowa is going to have an immunity zone towards certain shells between a certain range to a certain range. At the same time, if you do this correctly, the German battleships themselves will all of a sudden begin to have their own immunity zones at super close ranges. And when they get to longer and longer range, their armor actually becomes vulnerable to that higher angle of fall. So again, if you take a look at this table, if you take a look at, let's say, you know, 32 kilometers, which is maybe about 80% of the range, so maybe around sort of mid to mid longish range, maybe about 16 kilometers in game. Again, remember everything's sort of been condensed. Um, you'll see much, much more dramatic shell angle of fall, which means their armor protection at that kind of range won't be as effective. So this allows for play and counterplay, right? So the ships, if they have to deal with this kind of system, well, now battles become more maneuver warfare. You're going to try to get into proper position, proper range, and the enemy now has to decide, hey, do I want to pull range or do I want to close range? Speed, for example, is going to play an even more significant factor, right? Ships that are faster are going to be able to choose their engagement ranges. Ships that are slower, they're going to have to depend more on tactics and surprise to get into the right position, so on and so forth. So in essence, scaling these realistic penetration numbers down to the scale of the game, you know, we can, we can still keep the, you know, the, the, the closer ranges of the game, except now ships are going to be able to bring their full firepower to bear. They're no longer going to have to continue to sit, bow on, and depend on gimmicky auto-bounce mechanics and all that kind of stuff. They can now bring their full firepower to bear, knowing that, hey, if I'm at this range, I'm able to stay at this range. And, and remember, it's hard to do that when you're dealing with aircraft or destroyers and all these things. It's hard to do that, right? But it's like, hey, if I can maintain this distance, now I'm relatively safe from this, this, and this ship's shells while I'm vulnerable to that, that, and that ship's shells. And that allows you to create a dynamic between all the ships that no matter how many other new ships and lines you implement, they can all find a position somewhere on that table for them to fit. Another one of the reasons why I was kind of thinking about this is, you know, in the future, what are we going to do when we have ships where the armor protection and the guns are kind of different, right? What if you have a ship like the King George V class, where their armor design essentially protected them from 16-inch shell fire, but their guns were 14-inch guns? How, do, how do you, would a ship like that work in the current system? Are they going to constantly have to play a, a certain bow-on style to prevent themselves from getting killed off by things that just ignore their armor? Or can we implement a system where now they have, let's say, a closer immunity zone to the, that caliber of shellfire while their own guns are able to be effective at that closer distance? So this is something that I think, uh, you know, if Wargaming decides to ever, you know, ever do, I think this will solve a lot of their problems that they've had when it comes to um, various battleships and their armor profiles and how to get them all balanced properly. Anyways, folks, um, hope this has been an uh, interesting video for all of you. Um, if you have any questions about any of these things, uh, do make sure to ask those in the comment section below. Say from all that, uh, take care, have yourselves a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again soon. Thank you.